Thanks, Sean. Several years ago, like Arash said, when we first started working on Zebra Chip, uh, we were trying to figure out how uh, time of infection impacted uh, disease severity and uh, quality of seed and all that kind of thing. And the thing that was interesting to me at the time was that uh, anything uh, infested four weeks before harvest or earlier uh, were almost 100% uh, visually infected. I mean, you could cut that fresh tuber and clearly see the symptoms. Uh, at three weeks, only about 50% of them. And at two weeks, almost none of them showed symptoms at all. But when you tested them with LSO, uh, about 50% of them would test positive. The thing that was most interesting, uh, you had to get down to just one week before harvest before they showed no symptoms and we couldn't detect anything with uh, quantitative PCR. But much to our surprise, when we planted those same tubers, what we found is that tubers that had shown no uh, visible symptoms and tested negative for LSO with uh, PCR did not come up and emerge any better than ones that had been infested for the rest of the season, indicating to us that clearly something was going on there even though we didn't, we couldn't identify the pathogen in that. And so then we went into these storage studies that Arash just got through talking about uh, where we went in and uh, harvested potatoes and uh, sampled them at harvest, put them in storage and uh, so on and so forth. And like he said, uh, even one week before harvest in the, in the initial studies, uh, after they came out of harvest, when we, when we ended up uh, holding them at 55 degrees, all of a sudden the uh, pathogen became detectable. And then uh, we did some additional studies and we dropped it down to four days and we still got the same thing uh, at harvest. Uh, we couldn't detect it. We couldn't detect it all the way through the storage issue. But when we took it out of storage and held it at 55 degrees uh, for uh, a week or so, all of a sudden LSO became detectable, showing that the pathogen had gone from the infectious psyllids uh, and the leaves into the tuber in four days. And so, so that's uh, kind of where we were before this current study. And so clearly what we observe from all of this is that late season infections have the potential to be tremendously important uh, for the growers. And it really kind of depended on how many of those psyllids were positive and everything. But the potential for disease, severe disease from late season infections was there. Now, in, in Texas, uh, especially like in the Rio Grande Valley, that may not be as big a deal because uh, fairly routinely we will find, routinely we find that the psyllid populations peak, but then before harvest, they start dropping down a little bit. And so, uh, you know, for the first uh, week or two before harvest, the psyllid populations in a lot of locations in Texas have dropped lower than they were the rest of the season. And like Arash had indicated, a lot of the potatoes in Texas uh, are harvested uh, green and they go directly uh, into a truck and then to the processing plant where they'll be on the uh, grocery shelves in a couple of days as uh, potato chips. In the Pacific Northwest, it's a totally different issue. Um, a large percentage of the potatoes up there are vine killed, uh, as you can see right here. And after they kill those vines, uh, those potatoes may sit in the ground for weeks, uh, up to a month maybe. Uh, but certainly weeks is not uncommon. And so we were wondering what was happening in that time. But what even further uh, complicates this issue up there, unlike in Texas where the psyllid populations drop down, before harvest in the Pacific Northwest, the, the psyllid populations peak uh, at the end of the season. So they just keep going up and up. And this is data that I got from Carrie Willow uh, from WSU that she sends out every week. And you can clearly see that the, pop the, the psyllid populations are coming along and then they spike up. And then right in this area, you start your potato harvest. Uh, and so we thought there was potential for uh, problems with this, with the post-harvest after vine kill. 
So we initiated this study and we, um, we had two different types of desiccants that we used. We used Reglone, actually it was a Reglone mix, which is kind of a slow kill uh, chemical. And then we used sulfuric acid, which is really a very fast kill chemical. Uh, we infested the first time seven days before buying kill with both chemicals. Then we infested again just two days before buying kill with both chemicals. And then, although we didn't really expect that it would have an impact as a control, we went in and infested two days after buying kill with both chemicals and seven days after buying kill with both chemicals. And uh, we also included uh, infested and non-infested controls where we had uh, infested at these same dates or same times, uh, seven days before the buying kill, two days, uh, seven days after and two days after, but we didn't uh, kill those plants. So we just left them to see what would happen with disease under that situation. Uh, we used russet norcota, norcota in this study, uh, and, and I'm adding this for Neil, because he told us we were supposed to. Uh, we, we were using the central uh, haplotype, and it was an A and B mix. The, the vine kill was August 6th. We left them in a, the ground for a month and harvested them uh, one month after the vine kill. Um, at harvest, we went in and we did a visual rating with a, our zero to three scale. And although it's a zero to three scale, we'll often, uh, if, if something's kind of in, in between, we'll give it a 0.5 rating. And so we, we gave them the visual rating and then uh, we passed them over to the other side to Lee and her team. Uh, they took the Hoover sample for quantitative PCR analysis. And then uh, something that we don't usually do, we tried to do a fry test. And I'll say up front, we're not the best potato fryers, but uh, we, we tried. And so these are just some pictures that I wanted to show you what the, so you'll get a sense of what the plants look like when we infested them. Uh, just two hours after the vine kill, the, the plant with the reglone was just starting to get uh, a little brown uh, necrosis on the edges of the leaves, but really everything was still pretty green. Whereas uh, the plants that we treated with sulfuric acid were already melting down. I mean, they were just, uh, that's just two hours after we treated them. It was amazing to me. Uh, shouldn't have been, I guess, but it, uh, it cooked them. Two days uh, after the vine kill, the, the red loam, all the leaves were necrotic, but uh, the stems were still green. And so I was guessing at this point in time that when we infested uh, on that date, that those psyllids would be able to infect those plants and we might see something. Uh, again, the sulfuric acid plants uh, have not improved any from <laughs> when we did it. A week later uh, at our last infestation, uh, by now, the reglone treated plants were completely desiccated. The stems and everything were dead and green and necrotic, and the sulfuric acid treated plants were down on the ground. And so what, what we found uh, was actually pretty much what we had expected to find. The, the plants that were treated seven days before with the slow vine kill uh, or seven days before with the uh, fast vine kill both had very high uh, foliar, I mean, uh, tuber visual symptoms. And both of those were higher than the two day before or the two day uh, with the slow vine kill or the two day before with the fast vine kill. So uh, that's one thing that was really surprising to me that the plants that were infected uh, seven days before uh, had a higher disease score than those infected just two days before. But it was, it was really interesting to me and surprising that plants now in, infested just two days before buying kill expressed severe symptoms after they sat in the ground for that long. Also interesting to me was all of the plants, uh, except our uh, control here, all of the plants that were infested after buying kill 
it didn't matter whether we used the fast vine kill chemical or the uh, slow vine kill chemical. We had no symptom development and uh, were never able to detect LSO in those plants. Pretty much uh, the same thing when we looked at uh, LSO. Uh, the seven the seven week was higher uh, with the slow vine kill was higher than the two week in the these are controls, and then the seven day before, but the fast bind kill was fa faster uh, or had higher percent positive tubers than this. And then again, all of those that uh, had been treated or infested after the bind kill, there were no positive tubers. With regard to the, the LSO, again, it was kind of uh, mirroring what we saw with the symptom development and the percent positive. Uh, those that were treated seven days before with the fast vine kill had a uh, higher symptom expression and uh, then the two days before. Again, that, that surprised me. Uh, and the titer was also higher. And the reason that was surprising to me, it was just five days difference between those two treatments. Uh, and then they sat in the ground for a month. And I would have thought that during that month time, the, the pathogen would have kind of uh, equalized in the, in the tubers because of the small amount that was going. But we, we saw this consistently, and so during that two days, what happened between seven days versus a two day did make a difference in both titer and symptom severity. Um, one thing that uh, I was really pleased about, there was a strong correlation between our visual ratings and then what Lee found in the laboratory. And so when we rated the tubers uh, as zeros or totally healthy, uh, you can see that 148 out of a total of 151, uh, Lee found them to be negative in the lab. Uh, likewise, anything we rated as a one or above also had a very, very strong correlation with what Lee found. The one exception is the tubers that we rated 0.5. Uh, of 100 and what is that, 31, a total of 131 that we sampled and, and rated as a 0.5, uh, indicating that we thought they were just slightly infected. Uh, only 17 of them actually proved to be positive based on quantitative PCR. So we weren't very good there. Or, so either we were giving a false reading, a false positive visual reading, or the LSO titer in those tubers was so low that uh, it didn't um, show up. And just quickly with the fry test, uh, pretty much what we had expected uh, seven days before, either slow or fast, uh, totally unacceptable. And also this is what the ones just two days before. Uh, again, this is uh, not good news for the growers. So in uh, summary and conclusion, uh, LSO and zebra chip uh, do continue to develop in tubers uh, without question after vine kill, uh, if they were infested at least two days before harvest. And so that's uh, not good. Disease symptoms developed uh, in approximately 50% of the tubers uh, from plants treated with the desiccant just two days before vine kill. I was uh, kind of surprised with this. We keep dropping, uh, you know, we started with two weeks and then we dropped down to one week and then four days and now we're at two days. I guess we'll do another study next year uh, and, and see uh, if we can detect the pathogen in tubers after one, one day before infestation. The, the type of desiccant, whether we use sulfuric acid or the reglone, did not seem to impact infection or disease development. Uh, but both, both desiccants, as soon as we applied them, any infestation after application uh, was unsuccessful in establishing disease in those plants. However, we don't know if the mechanism was because uh, uh, something that was a, uh, it made the plant where it was non, uh, non suitable for a host for the psyllid to feed on and he didn't like the way it tasted and didn't feed, or maybe it was a physiological issue. Certainly with the sulfuric acid, I suspect it was the latter uh, uh, physiological uh, condition of the plant. There was a, a very strong correlation between the visual symptoms uh, ratings and the uh, quantitative PCR results, as we indicated, except at the uh, 0.5 rating. And there was a significant difference in LSO titer and disease symptom severity in tubers 
uh, from plants infested seven days before vine kill or two days before, uh, despite the fact that the tubers weren't harvested until a month. This is one of the big things that was surprising to me. I'm, I'm not really clear on why you would see that difference in just five days. Uh, the late season psyllid infestations, clearly, this is the bottom line. They, they clearly pose a significant disease threat uh, when tubers are not harvested soon after buying kill uh, because the disease does continue to develop. And uh, it just suggests to me that the importance of we have to improve uh, our techniques for psyllid monitoring and LSO detection techniques uh, to be able to determine what our true threat is out there and be able to give the growers the information they need for uh, developing optimal management strategies.